In sociology, a social network is defined as the people you make frequent contact with. The personal network size for each adult in a sample of 2,819 adults was calculated. The sample had a mean personal network size of 14.6, with a known population standard deviation of 9.8. Part A. Give a point estimate for the mean personal network size of all adults. Part B. Form a 95% confidence interval for the mean personal network size of all adults. And then C and D says give the practical interpretation of the interval and give the conditions required for the interval to be valid. All right, so let's take a look at um, this example 104 from the notes and recognize first that they're asking us to perform a confidence interval in part B. So that's the main focus. In part A, they want to know the point estimate for the mean personal network size. A point estimate is just a single number that's used to estimate the thing you're interested in. We're interested in estimating the mean personal network size, so the average personal network size for all adults. If we look at this study, our best guess based on the study um, for that number would be the sample mean, because we want to know what the mean personal network size is, so why don't we use the sample mean from the study? And that sample mean says that it was, according to this, the mean personal network size was 14.6. So we're going to go ahead and assume that the answer for part A would be that x bar is 14.6. So remember that when you're looking for a point estimator, you're looking for a single value that is supposed to estimate the quantity you're interested in. In our case, it was the mean, so we use the sample mean. All right, let's do part B. Part B says to form a 95% confidence interval for the mean personal network size of all adults. Well, in order to do that part, we're going to use the four steps that I have listed here in the notes above. So step one, we're gonna list all the sample data in the problem. So what that means is that we're going to go ahead and start with you know, things like the sample size, the sample mean, the standard deviation, in this case it says it's the population standard deviation in the problem. See it says population standard deviation, so I'm going to use the symbol sigma. However, in truth they probably would have no way of knowing that, so it really should be a sample standard deviation and then we would use s. But either way you need an n, an x bar, a standard deviation, and then of course we'll have a confidence level. After the confidence level you can figure out what alpha is. So let's go ahead and fill these things in. The end for the problem, it says that there was a sample of 2,819, so 2,819. They said the sample mean, as we wrote above, was 14.6. They said the population standard deviation was 9.8. They said the confidence level in the problem, part B, is 95%. And alpha, then, would have to be 5% because the two of them have to add up to 100, so 0.05. All right, so the second part of this confidence interval procedure is to figure out what your z alpha divided by 2 value is. So z alpha divided by 2 here, because we're using a large sample size, 2,819, and so because of that, we're, we're okay with using z. So we're going to go ahead and look at the table now to determine what the z alpha divided by 2 value would be when our confidence level is 95% and our sample size is very large. All right, so in this problem, our confidence level is 95%. That means our alpha is 5%, and that means we need to take half of alpha to find z alpha divided by 2, and we'll look that up on the table. So half of alpha, if alpha is 5%, is 2.5%, and that means we'll be in this column here on our table in the middle where it says 2.5%. And we're going to need to scroll all the way down to the bottom because our sample size is very large. Let's do that and see what we find. Well. It looks like at the very bottom of the table, the last value in that column is 1.96. So that's the value we will take for our, number, for our z alpha divided by 2, 1.96. Okay, so we found our z alpha divided by 2 value to be 1.96. Now we move on to our step 3 of the process, which is to find the margin of error. The margin of error is a formula, so we're just going to plug in the formula first. It's z alpha divided by 2 sigma over the square root of n. So you multiply sigma over the square root of n times z alpha divided by 2, and let's fill in those numbers. z alpha divided by 2 is 1.96, sigma is 9.8, and the square root of n will be the square root of 2,819. And if I enter all that into the calculator, let's see what that gives me. So I'm going to start out with 1.96 times 9.8 divided by the square root of 2,819. 
I'm going to close that up, hit enter, and we'll have our following answer. It's 0 0.3617, so on and so forth. So 0.3617 dot dot dot. It's going to go on and on forever. I'll actually store that in my calculator so I have it for later. And I don't like to round until the very last step of the process. So I leave that in there as it is. All right, the next step and the final step of the confidence interval is to simply fill in the following part, which is going to be x bar minus the error, comma, x bar plus the error. So we just do a simple addition and subtraction problem. All right, x bar in this case is 14.6, and we'll subtract off that 0.362. So I went ahead and rounded it there just so it's not going to take up our whole page, right? So I rounded the error a little bit. And then it'll be 14.6 plus the 0.362. Okay, so I filled that in and now we quickly do that. I'm just gonna do this in my head quickly. If this is 14.6 minus say like 0.4, this will work out to be approximately 14.2 comma, and then 14.6 plus 0.4 will give you 15.0. So, you know, there are some people that have, you know, or some professors that pay particular attention to round off rules. So some people will say you wanna round to the same place as the sample mean. Others say you want to give the answer to one place greater than the sample mean was given to. Um, that's up to your individual class professor. I assume that rounding is something you're comfortable with, so I'll go ahead and leave it as it is. All right, so there's your interval. And from there, finally, we want to give a statement. We want to be able to say what this interval is doing for us. And what we're going to say is that we are 95%, that was our confidence interval, we're 95% confident that the true, and this problem is about the mean personal network size, right, for all adults is between, and the numbers that we found were 14.2 and 15.0. So we believe that the personal network size, the true average personal network size for adults is between these two values. So we think the population mean is in there. That's very vital that you remember that we think the population mean is one of the numbers inside the interval here. We're 95% confident of that. All right, let's do part C now. Part C is the part where we want to give the practical interpretation. We're basically going to say that, you know, somewhere between 14 and 15 people are in the average person's personal network, right? So basically the the mean personal network size is between 14 and 15 people, right? So, you know, of course, I'm being a little loose here because it's actually between 14.2 and 15, but, you know, just rounding it down here, we say 14 to 15 because this is just a practical interpretation. We're saying, hey, the average person has about 14 or 15 people that they keep in contact with on a regular basis. And the final part of the problem, part D, is to answer the question, what are the conditions that are required for the interval to be valid? So these are actually mentioned here. I wrote the answer in here in the original problem. And it says, of course, the sample must be random. Obviously, you want to make sure that you take a random sample when you're doing a study like this. So you have a representative sample, that is, right? A random sample is usually representative, so we like to take a random sample. And then finally, we relied on the fact that um, the sample size was large here to let us use this z alpha divided by 2. Implicitly, when you use z alpha divided by 2, you're assuming that we have normality here for x bar. We're assuming that x bar is normally distributed if we're using this z alpha divided by 2 value. We can assume that here because under the central limit theorem, it says that as long as n is larger than 30, we can usually assume that x bar will be at least approximately normal. So the two conditions are that the sample is random and that n is basically greater than 30. If those are met, then the interval we just created should be valid.